Welcome to Principles of Success. This is week six, session one. This course is a part of Malco Institute of Technology's leadership series. Our companion text is See You at the Top by Zig Ziglar. Welcome to week six, session one. Today, we look at step 15 of the 15 steps to a healthier self-image. Step 15 says, earnestly and honestly work towards being physically fit. It is no secret that people who are physically fit or are working towards that goal have more stamina, are happier, and exude more confidence than those who are not fit and are not working towards that kind of goal. You may not be fit and may not be working towards that type of goal, but still be positive. How much more will you be when you combine your naturally good disposition with the psychological and biological advantages offered by good health? Regular exercise makes your heart and bones stronger, lowers your risk for chronic disease right along with your blood pressure, keeps your weight under control, and reduces feelings of anxiety and depression. 30 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise is enough to release the beta endorphins that increase feelings of well-being and to lower levels of costal, the hormone associated with stress and anxiety. I invite you to watch this short video entitled Exercise and the Brain. Additional resources are available on our website. Join us next time for session two. New studies suggest that exercise helps the brain function better and that may have important implications, especially for kids. Early show correspondent Debbie Turner-Bell is here with more. Good morning. Good morning. We both exercise and I think we can attest to this. Researchers are finding that exercise can do more than keep you fit. It can also make you smarter. So one school in Illinois has developed a program that gets kids moving and learning. These high school students appear to be working out, but they're actually trying to adjust their brain's chemistry to maximize their ability to learn. We're putting kids in a PE class prior to classes that they struggle in. And what we're doing is we're finding great, great results. What kind of heart rate have we got right now? Paul Ziantarski runs a learning readiness program at Naperville Central High School in Illinois. The program was started in response to research showing a link between exercise and increased brain function. Ziantarski says he's seen results. Kids who took PE before they took the math class had double the improvement of kids who had PE afterwards. Exercise optimizes the brain and the person for learning. It creates the right environment for all of our 100 billion nerve cells up there. Dr. John Rady is a professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School and the author of Spark, a book that examines how our brains change when we exercise. It produces these, these growth factors, uh, one of which is called BDNF, and I call miracle growth for the brain or brain fertilizer, which helps the brain cells stay alive, live longer, and it helps the learning process. Rady cites studies showing that exercise promotes the growth of new cells in the hippocampus, an area in the brain associated with memory and learning. Exercise promotes, more than anything else we know, the growth of new brain cells. Naperville Central High School has embraced the idea that working out helps a child learn. Here, you'll find exercise equipment in some classrooms. Their body's moving and their brains are thinking and they're engaged and they're not, not sitting still trying to study something and memorize something. Maxine Kozel is a reading teacher who believes that kids learn best when they're moving. Here, students work on vocabulary while standing on balance boards. You know, they say that having to balance um, actually helps them concentrate even better. When you heard about this concept of moving while learning, were you skeptical about that? 
Not at all. It was logical to me. I know that that's how I learn best. If I'm energized, I'm ready to go. And it makes sense not to have the students sitting for such a long period of time. Getting them up moving um, helps them stay energized, focus better, pay attention better. In this math class, students rarely zone out because every so often they take a brain break. We're going to do slap count and we're going to just go up to 30. Brain breaks are interactive games that get kids up and out of their seats. When I first got into teaching it, they said, don't let the students out of the desks because there could be problems. So now it's uh, move them out of their desks. They need to move. They need to get up and around to get their, their brain going. Rather than wearing them out, kids say that exercising before class and moving during class makes the schoolwork seem easier. If you go out and you go for a run, and then you read, it's a lot easier to read because you feel more awake. I said be quiet! Students like the ones in the movie Doubt are typically admonished for not sitting still in class. But a new trend in education actually encourages restlessness. These fourth graders in Fort Collins, California, sit or bounce on stability balls, keeping their bodies active while they learn. They're better than chairs because you get to wiggle around. And a growing body of research shows that wiggling around helps kids focus. Movement really is very connected to our learning brain. That actually does stimulate the brain to wake up a little bit. These sixth graders in Missouri no longer sit through a lesson plan, they stand. Their desks even come with swinging footrests. And kids at the action-based learning lab in Pennsylvania jump on trampolines while solving math problems. New research from the University of Illinois shows that even a single bout of moderate exercise stimulates the brain and improves cognitive function in elementary school kids. This brain image shows the average response of kids during a test they took after walking for 20 minutes. Now notice how much less brain activity there is in the same kids when they took the test after just sitting quietly. It, it improves our attention system almost immediately. It decreases our impulsivity or the fidgetiness. It improves motivation and decreases the anxiety and the feeling of, I can't do it. And hey, kids can have a bit of fun, too. Dr. Sanjay Gupta of CNN is here. Sanjay, we're learning so much about the brain these days. Yeah, it is remarkable. One of the long-standing beliefs was we believed that the brain had nowhere to go but down. But new research is showing that through physical, through mental exercise, you can actually keep your memory as you age. You can even create new brain cells. So we're walking right now. Mm -hmm. What's happening to my brain? Well, what we found in our study is that uh, walking will uh, increase the volume of the brain, increase the efficiency of the brain, and increase a uh, number of improvements in a number of cognitive processes, such as memory and attention. Just by walking? Just by walking. Professor Arthur Kramer of the University of Illinois in Urbana is part of a revolution, challenging a long-held belief in the world of neuroscience that the brain is hardwired, fixed, immutable. He says changing the size and the function of your brain is as easy as taking a few steps. We walk at 40 minutes. 78-year-old Grace Miller walked three days a week for six months. Have you noticed the difference? I, I really think so. My husband and I, we kind of try to remember things. Lately, I've been doing all the answering. <laughs> we do know that over about a six-month period, you can get about a 15% improvement in memory and attention and a variety of in other things. In six months? In six months. Right. That, that's pretty remarkable. Professor Kramer took pictures of the brains of 60 participants before and after six months of walking and saw an increase in crucial areas responsible for memory and decision making. I was surprised at how much plasticity, how much flexibility older brains have because the, the, the general belief up until about a decade or so ago was that, um, that brains deteriorated as we age. That's not true. Not true at all. Plasticity. It's the actual strengthening of connections between neurons, stopping, yes, even reversing memory loss. Physical exercise helps, and so do mental exercises. The brain is actually revising itself. It's actually plastically changing itself as you develop new skills and abilities, as you learn new things. Professor Mike Merzenek of the University of California, San Francisco, has in many ways turned neuroscience on its head by championing this idea of plasticity. He has even developed a computer program called Brain Fitness, which is commercially available for almost $400.
Users make thousands of decisions per hour. The result? Possibly a mind that is 10 years younger. Seniors at the Heritage Estates in California say it's made a difference. It stimulates your brain and it really makes you uh, remember and, and want to remember. To be clear, what Merzenich is selling hasn't been independently proven to work. But a recent study in the Journal of the American Medical Association says that the benefits of cognitive training like this can last five years. You know, without question, there's also already lots of good reasons to exercise. We already know that. But this idea that you could actually train the most important muscle of all, your brain, that's coming to reality. People are starting to believe. If you're suffering from depression, chances are that a morning jog or pulling out the yoga mat isn't at the top of your to-do list, but maybe it should be. Studies show exercising for 30 minutes three to five days a week may significantly improve depression symptoms. Researchers believe vigorous cardiovascular exercise like running or biking produces the most dramatic improvements but say virtually any type of regular exercise offers the potential to improve your mood. People who suffer from depression typically have reduced levels of specific brain chemicals called neurotransmitters, especially serotonin, which is important for mood regulation. Research suggests that exercise increases levels of serotonin, which may improve state of mind. During extended periods of exercise, the body also releases chemicals called endorphins, which have long been known to reduce perception of pain and improve mood by triggering an energizing, euphoric feeling throughout the body, often referred to as the runner's high. But you don't have to be a long distance runner to realize these benefits. Studies show meditation techniques which allow you to relax mentally and physically also trigger endorphin release and feelings of well-being. Even better, these positive feelings often linger long past a 20-minute meditation. Exercise also promotes restful sleep, an added bonus for those depression sufferers who are also affected by insomnia. According to sleep researchers, studies show that people who engaged in exercise fell asleep more quickly, slept longer, and experienced more restful sleep than those who didn't exercise. If you haven't exercised for a while, it's important to start slowly. Give yourself time to build up to longer sessions and more vigorous activities. Equally important is choosing a form of exercise well suited to your abilities that you'll enjoy on an ongoing basis. Experts also advise that when exercising to help manage your depression, you should focus on improving your state of mind. Don't complicate matters by trying to lose weight or change your physique. If you're not sure where to start, walking is one way to ease yourself into an exercise routine. In addition to the mood boost produced from a brisk walk, taking your walk in a local park can also help decrease feelings of isolation. Another approach to beginning your exercise routine is choosing something you've always wanted to learn, such as golf or tennis or even revisiting an activity you used to enjoy like dancing or swimming. But don't be discouraged if these types of activities don't sound appealing. You can start enjoying the benefits of exercise simply by doing housework, working in the yard, working out to a low impact aerobic video, or practicing yoga. Many experts believe that any type of regular, moderate exercise may reduce depression severity, relieve physical and emotional symptoms, and decrease stress. Exercise can also boost your self-esteem and provide a greater sense of being in control. Remember, you should always consult your health care provider before beginning any type of exercise program.